Hello everyone, Disturbell is back, and a new trailer for Thor Love and Thunder dropped yesterday, and I have a lot of thoughts on that trailer, and they're not all positive. Um, so for the, the Marvel fans, they're gonna get mad at me again. I know I haven't been very positive on Marvel lately, but I give my honest thoughts on these things, and I think that Marvel has taken an overall turn for the worse lately. But before you leave, maybe hear me out a little bit. Um, so let me talk about what I liked about this Thor Love and Thunder trailer. Uh, first of all, the visuals. Everything about the visuals. It, going to the poster, the poster looks absolutely fantastic. After years of people complaining about the generic Marvel posters, they've been coming out with things more unique lately. I love the 80s feel of the poster. I love how it feels like everything's been painted on. I love the composition of it. It's actually pretty simple for a poster. I heard Taika Waititi say that they wanted to add more to the poster, but then they thought it would make it work look worse. I think it looks amazing. I've got it, did I say that? I've got it as my iPhone wallpaper now. Um, I just think that it's an incredible poster and the the cinematography and the colors and the visuals, everything you see in the trailer looks amazing. Gore, people say he looks a lot scarier in the comics. I personally, I personally really like him in the trailer. I think he looks like he could be a really scary, intimidating villain. I love how everything goes black and white when they're fighting him. And I love how there's there's certain shots in the trailer. There's one of uh, Thor fighting someone at the very end of the trailer. And it's like, it looks like it's animated and it just, it's just such a colorful movie on every level and it just looks so great. That alone could sell me on the trailer. And also, it looks like it could be a lot of fun. There's, you know, there's a lot of comedy and, and there, the actors have a lot of charisma. It just looks like it could be a really fun movie and Ragnarok I thought was a really fun movie. But the big problem of the movie that really overshadows how amazing the visuals look and how the the, the tone and the comedy could be really good. Um, what really wrecks it for me is the continued treatment of Thor's character. I feel that ever since Endgame they've used Thor as the butt of jokes instead of um, just a comedic character in general. And that's how I feel with this movie. What I see, you know, you, you get the final big um, uh, scene in the trailer that's supposed to be funny when Zeus blows Thor's uh, cloak off and you've got Valkyrie and Jane just kind of snickering in the background. Should we help him? No, we'll help him later because you know You see Thor is the one that needs to be helped now. He's the idiot the 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 big dumb idiot who needs to have Jane and, and Valkyrie come rescue him and that's my big problem there's been a lot of discussion of this movie that it's adapting the female Thor um, storyline from the comics and the big fear in that is that Disney has had a habit, and it's a pattern at this point, of tearing down their male characters just to promote their female characters. We saw that in the Loki show where it became more about Sylvie than Loki. And I always want to give it the benefit of the doubt that, um, you know, Thor and Jane Foster Thor can be a team in this. And we do see a little bit of that. We see um, them nearly holding hands. We've got the love in the Love and Thunder title that maybe they'll uh, reconcile their relationship at the end. And I would love it if this movie ends with Thor rediscovering who he is as a superhero and teaming up with Jane again. And then they go off right into the sunset of space and, and continue to be superheroes together. But I'm afraid we're not going to get that because, like I said, the Thor, the, this trailer is just portraying Thor as this stupid idiot who's, you know, was dumped by Jane, or mutual dumping as he called it, and, and that, you know, he's, he's, I said it on Twitter, he feels like he's emasculated for the entire trailer. He feels like the dumb guy who doesn't know what he's, do, what he's doing, who doesn't know what he is, and then here comes Jane who's perfect at everything. You get that in that little scene where she's like, oh, it's just my first bad guy, and he's like, you know, never forget your first. It's like, it, it just feels like she's very casual about being a superhero and is just good at it, while here comes Thor who's like, feels like he's left behind over this. And uh, you know, like I said, I want them to be a team and I want the movie to end like that, but I'm afraid that it's gonna end with Thor being like, Jane, you're, you're a much better Thor than I am. So, you know, you go do this and I'll go retire somewhere and I don't know, be fat again. I don't want that to happen. Um, but it's a pattern at this point. Every time I get my hopes up, like, 
you know, Disney can do this promotion of female characters correctly. They really let me down. And it just feels... It, it's just obligatory by Disney, the way they're trying to promote women, in a way that they're trying to cover up for their mistakes in the past. But they reveal that they don't understand really how to do women when they do it like this. I mean, I think the perfect example of how Disney's attitude towards promoting women is... Uh, go back to Toy Story 4, you've got John Lasseter who did that movie because he's like, it's about my wife who's really bulky and, you know, she's wearing pants now, she's a more masculine character, she's tough, she's strong. And then you hear behind the scenes John Lasseter was actually accused of harassing women at Pixar for most of his career. So that that's kind of Disney's attitude. They don't treat women well behind the scenes and they're trying to compensate for that by, you know, really promoting them on screen. And there's nothing wrong with promoting women on screen. The problem is when you do it badly, when you try to tear down the male characters in order to make the female characters look good, it doesn't work out. And it seems like a really misguided attempt by the men at Disney to try to do this. Like, if you just put women on a pedestal above men in in movies, then that's what women like in real life, right? And then they maybe won't look at what's been going behind the scenes at Disney. So, so that's the big thing. I mean, you can have great visuals, you can have pretty good comedy, you can have all that stuff. You can have a great looking villain in a Marvel movie, but if they end up destroying a hero that I've liked for, what, how long's it been? 10 years? Well, yeah, 10 years at this point since the first Avengers I watched, then I'm just not going to be into the movie if they tear down Thor's character just to promote Jane Foster and Valkyrie and the other female characters. I want female characters to be promoted in the correct fashion where... You don't have to make other characters look worse just to make them look better. <sighs> I'm just really frustrated with Marvel at this point. And I, I've been predicting, I've been predicting for a long time that Thor, Love and Thunder is going to be the, the big, it's going to be the big stumbling block. It looks like Multiverse of Madness might have been that. And I didn't really predict that. But Thor, Love and Thunder is my big prediction. I really don't like that we might potentially tear down one of the original six Avengers in this movie. But what do you guys think of the trailer? Were you just bedazzled by all the visuals and the comedy? Let me know in the comments below. Or do you hate me for what I, all that I've said? I've got to be honest with my thoughts, you guys. I can't be positive on everything. But um, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.